In America, wild horses are an icon of the West, but with populations increasing due to little management, wild horses could signify a problem consistent with the tragedy of the commons. Current horse and borough populations are managed by being placed on feedlots and holding pastures, but these and other methods do not necessarily control increases in the population. The cost is heavy on the taxpayer to feed and manage these horses, keeping them in an unnatural environment unable to roam free due to limited resources. Together, Congress and state officials must work to create a solution so that these horses can be preserved without becoming destructive to themselves, to their environment, and to other species. And we need to take care of these animals. It is inhumane to watch an animal starve to death, a horse starve to death, and it's inhumane to watch them die from thirst when there's not enough water. And that is what's happening in lots of the rangelands out there. The Free Roaming Wild Horse and Burrow Act of 1971, also known as the Wild Horse Annie Act, gave BLM parameters and tools to manage wild horses and burrows. Although most agree the act was a good thing, not all tools of the act are able to be used due to certain legislative measures as well as disapproval from environmental and wildlife activists. And I commend the Secretary's initiative on wild mustangs, but we need the BLM to better understand state needs to preserve these icons that are so much a part of America. It talked about euthanization. It talked about sale without limitation of horses that were unadoptable. Um, and those are the kinds of tools that we don't have on the table right now. And so that's what the act intended is that any horses that were unadoptable, that were um, overaged, old horses, um, you know, we had those tools to help us then um, control the population. Um, and so because we don't have those tools, removal off the range is the only tool that we've had. It's quite, it, actually the law, the act itself is a pretty good act. The implement, implementation of the act is the issue. So there's a large and vocal group of citizens in the United States who just do not understand the issues of wild horse management from the actual functionality of implementing the law. And unfortunately, they have taken the teeth out of the law, and BLM has very few options in their toolbox to deal with the wild horse issue. Wild horse populations are currently 30 to 40 percent above carrying capacity. This has major impacts on wide areas of rangeland that are meant for multiple use, not single use, so that other animals such as cattle and sage grouse are also able to live off the resources. It is unusual to protect a non-native species in a wildlife refuge. Extra effort and resources are needed to ensure that the wild herd does not impair the ecosystems for the native animals and plants. Managing the resource is real important for the livelihood of everything, not just the horses, but, but cattle, the sage grouse, uh, pronghorn, all the multiple uses that use the resources. So for me, um, it's real important that we manage the ecology and, and the resources, because once they're gone, they're gone. We have screwed this up, mankind screwed this up, so now we've got to fix it. Um, otherwise, we're going to screw up the whole ecology of um, the Great Basin, so the arid, semi arid lands of the West. Anywhere that there's horses on, on public lands or even private lands, um, if they're not managed appropriately, they will trash the resource. In addition to environmental costs, the economic cost to maintain the wild horses and burrows adds up as well. All our hay is purchased uh, by contract. It's bid on. A lot of it comes local, depending on water resources in the Fallon area and uh, over in the Susanville Alturius area. Uh, generally, we feed one ton per hundred horses per day. So we are currently feeding 11 ton of hay per day. Rough cost is around $250 a ton currently.
adoption program was never supposed to deal with the large number of animals that we have. It's a maintenance tool, so if we ever get our populations back to the appropriate management level, then the adoption program can then help balance that and we can remove only those horses that we need to adopt or vice versa. We'll have the right amount of horses to adopt because that's all that we need to take off. But it takes all those other tools to get us to that point. And so that's, that's the, the problem at hand. We need to, the BLM should be allowed to gather the horses that they need to bring them down to appropriate management level um, for the herd management areas, remove them from areas where they're supposed to be zeroed out. And then any horses that are not adopted, they should be allowed to dispose of them humanely through a processing facility. So before we can even begin to discuss um, techniques such as spaying mares, castrating studs, creating herds that are gender specific, we need to reduce herd sizes back down to the carrying capacity of rangelands. Environmental activists and members of Congress must understand that the wild horse population needs to be controlled, and only then will management methods be successful. Congress must aid in giving back the tools necessary for BLM so that these icons of the West are no longer a major expense to taxpayers, nor an obstruction to rangelands and the many other wild species who inhabit them.